Hello, my name is Shigeko Sasamori. I was 13 years old when an atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. That was 1945, August 6. I was a junior high student that particular day. We were helping the city to clean up the broken houses. I just started to go to work. I heard airplane. And I look up at the sky, it was a beautiful blue sky and silver airplane, and white long tails, it looked so pretty. So I told my classmate next to me, and look up at the sky. The plane so pretty, and almost same time, I said to her, "Look up," and I saw white things coming down. Later, I heard that was the parachute. Then, almost same time, I got a very strong pressure knock me down. After. A, Long time, probably long time, I was unconscious. Then when I conscious, they look around, pitchy black. I couldn't see anything. I feel nothing. I didn't hear anything. Then pretty soon the blackness go away, like a fog clear up. Then the first things I saw was people moving very slowly, and those people was not uh, any nobody the normal. Everybody somehow got hurt. Some people burned. Some people uh, stick in the grasses all over the body or cutting, uh, hurt and bleeding. And the people looks just horrible. But. They are moving very slowly toward to the river because we was, I was <coughs> near the by river. By the time I got there, river, already many, many people, most everybody had hurt and dead body in the water. Couldn't hardly see the water. Then all of a sudden, I heard the baby screaming. I looked aside. The baby and mother was both hurt and burned. That baby screaming opened my ear, and my conscious came back. Then I followed the people over the bridge, the other side of the river. Walked about 1.5 kilometer away. There is a elementary school. And then I stayed at elementary school five days, four nights. No water, nobody, no medication, nobody paid attention for me, but I was saying my name and the address, keeping saying one more time, I said somebody pay attention, and luckily, Five days after the bomb, some man heard, and then he went to my parents' place. That way, my parents find me. Then, after my parents find me, I ask my mother how they find me, how our looks was, and she told me many, many years later. Finally, she told me that. I was, uh, when she saw me, couldn't find my face because my face was a big basketball look like a falling and black and like a dark when the people make the toast, a mistake in the burning and so black and it couldn't edible. So they, what they did was they cut you know, my face, uh, hair, in the blackness, 
to peel the, my face and underneath the blackness was a very thick puff, yellow puff that was the infection. I can you imagine hot summer, no take care of nothing. So the first things my mother did is to take material to wash off the, the infection. The miracle I survived. Then after, uh, while I'm lying in the bed, people talking. There's many people come to outside looking for the family and friends. And those people saying the city was hell because so many dead body or wounded people or on the street and and hot summer and maggot became a fly, so they have to push away the fly to the walk in the street, and then smell so bad, they have to handkerchiefs and the covers in the nose and mouth, and it sounds like a hell. Then many story people talking, I will tell you one of the two. And the most of my heart is still aching it was is a uh, child under under the house recording mama and and mama and mother can't find where the child is then pretty soon the uh, child scream and, and hot then stop the voice see the mother see the child burned it alive. Uh, and the uh, other person saying, my mother's a good friend, she and my mother the crying and talking that her older daughter was buried under the house and she, she couldn't pull her out and half the body is out. And then pretty soon the fire is coming and she wanted, she couldn't pull her out. Then the older daughter said, Mama, I have to go. And she, because she had a, another two little child with her, if you do not go away, those children stay here, not necessarily to die. So mother has to go. And then goodbye to the alive daughter. And, and the fire is coming and burned. And those people, Living deaths, that is not just one or two stories. The many, many, I'm sure many people, that cessation. So those things, the bomb, people suffered. Still, still now these days in Hiroshima, had a, we call it atomic bomb hospital, people still suffering because of the radiation. When I got burned, is not, this is not fire burned. This is the radiation burning. And uh, also, I inhaled, inhaled uh, radiation, so I got the intestinal of the cancer. A couple of years ago, I had a big operation to take off the two 20 inches in my intestine. So still I have a creation of the cancer in my thyroid. See, the radiation is uh, very dangerous because it never go away. And it, it wants to get into the human body. Later on, they get to the illness. Most are cancer. Then. Right now, as people know already, that uh, Fukushima, the, the tsunami, and uh, nuclear power tower, tower was exposed. And also, those had radiation all over the spring out to the air. See, people. Many people don't know how dangerous the radiation. 
So we should get a bit of it, those uh, nuclear uh, issues, I uh, mean, nuclear powers. So we are survivors. Because I survived, this is my mission to tell the people to clean up this earth. The, so, but we, we are going to order. So I came to the people to ask to, to understand, then also help to this earth, and also young people to, to, to hear my story. And they are taking, uh, like uh, giving the path to the next generation, to the, uh, continue to, to talk and uh, help this, make this earth clear. <laughs>